going to get right to it and not waste any of your time. The secret weapon for recording high quality screen recordings on your Mac to use with YouTube videos and courses or really anything at all is ScreenFlow. Now, if you're not already using ScreenFlow, you can grab a free trial. That way you can walk through all of these different features that I'm gonna show you in this video as I go through everything. And I put a link down in the description for that free trial. So we're gonna jump onto my Mac over here. And I've been using ScreenFlow for about the last six years or so. When I first started my channel, I used the free screen recording apps out there like QuickTime and OBS. And I just always ran into some type of a snag or some trouble with the audio or the audio syncing. And so I made the investment in ScreenFlow and I have been loving it ever since. Wow, that is a messy desktop. So I'm going to open up ScreenFlow right here. Now I'm using the most recent version. I want to come to this new recording window here. Now what we have is the opportunity to record multiple screens, multiple devices, depending on what we have plugged into our computer at the time. Now I only have one monitor, so you can see that we have Thunderbolt display selected. My iPhone is actually plugged into my computer right now, so I can record the screen of my iPhone as well. If I wanted to, I could record from my webcam. And then we also have this option to record our computer audio. So we'll check all of these things off here. It's going to record everything that it possibly can. And then down here at the bottom, if you want to switch over to the more advanced settings, you can choose your frame rate. Mine is just set to highest. Um, 30 frames per second for the timeline when we go to edit it. And I don't need to set a timer or a loop for what I'm doing, but this might work for you depending on exactly what you're trying to screen record. And then down at the bottom, we have these two buttons. If I just select this red button here, it's gonna record my whole entire screen. If I select this little button with the square, I can set up and start a partial screen capture. And so it gives you this um, option here where you can change the size and the dimensions so you can literally record any part of your screen that you want. Down here at the very bottom you can come in and select some predetermined dimensions like 1920 by 1080. So I know that if I record my screen here within this frame it's going to fit into a regular 1080 YouTube video like the one I'm recording right now. So what I really wanna do is actually record the whole screen. So I'll hit that big red button. It's going to give us a summary of everything that it's going to record and give us a countdown. And now it's recording my whole entire screen plus my webcam, plus my external microphone, plus my iPhone. I guess that's it. Was that everything? It's recording literally everything. Yes, you can see the desktop icons, but if you come up here to the menu, you can come down and hit hide desktop icons. And now it looks like I am a neat freak with my desktop, which I am definitely not. Let me open up Final Cut Pro. So if I was going to do a Final Cut Pro tutorial, this is how I would do it with ScreenFlow. I would just do the tutorial, talk into my microphone, and it will record everything on my screen. When we are done, let me close this out. When we're done, we just come up here to hit stop record, and you can see that it created this project for us, similar to you know pretty much any video editing software, where you have a preview window up here at the very top, and then you have a timeline down here at the bottom. Over here on the right is like the media bin or all of the different tracks and media pieces that it did record. So as far as editing goes, you can treat all of these just like a regular video clip. You can delete it entirely. You can move things around. If you do command plus or minus on your keyboard, it's gonna zoom in or out for you. If you want to zoom in and out of your timeline, just do plus or minus on your keyboard without the command. And then let's say you have a long piece here that you want to get rid of. You can say right here where I'm not talking, you can see in the waveforms, I'm not talking here. So we can select it, right click, do split clip, and then come over here, select it, split clip again. 
Now we have this separate clip here that we can actually delete if we wanted to get rid of it completely or a better way to do this so that you could edit both of these tracks at the same time is just to make sure they're both selected. Hit the I button on your keyboard that stands for in and then find where you want to end this clip and hit O for out. And now you have this in point and end point that you have selected here. And then if you hit command delete, it's going to completely get rid of that section that you selected and it's going to shift all of your clips together so you don't have any weird gaps in your timeline. Now, of course, you can sort of build your screencast as you go here by coming down to configure recording. You don't have to just one and done hit record, hope you cover everything. You can set up your screen uh, recording as you go and kind of build on it or re-record certain sections as you need to. So if I hit stop record, up here, then it's going to ask us, do we want to create a new document? I'm going to say no, I want to add it to my document, which is called untitled.screenflow. I can give it a name. I can say, well, this is take two. I can hit add the clip directly to the timeline, choose OK. And now it's added the audio and the actual video, the actual screen recording, I can add this down here and put it in line with where I want it to go. Now, once you have recorded your screencast, this is really where ScreenFlow shines. This is kind of what makes it the secret weapon that it is. And that's the editing of the screencast. Yes, you can take this, export it, edit it in any video editing software that you use. Like I use Final Cut Pro to edit my YouTube videos. But when I'm editing a screencast, I edit right here within ScreenFlow. So over here on the right hand side, it, we have the effects, this sort of like control panel area. And this little spot here, the video settings is where you can decide if you want to scale up, zoom in on something, that would be the scale feature. I'm not going to go through every single one of these, but I do want to show you what you have available. Come over to the speaker. Now this one doesn't have audio on it, but this one does. So I can select this audio track here and edit the volume or mute it completely. Moving over here to the screen recording settings, this is where you can actually edit what is going on within the screen recording. And this is what's really, really cool. If you can find, let's see, we'll find a place here. Yeah. So look at my mouse, which is right here, pretty much smack dab in the center of the screen. I can decide to make it go away just by unchecking this show mouse pointer box, make it go away, or I can make it even bigger. This is really helpful for YouTube videos when you're doing any kind of tutorial where you're clicking around is to make that mouse pointer bigger. You can also add a click effect or an attention effect so that as your mouse moves around on the screen, you can see where the mouse is. It's almost like a spotlight feature. You can change the colors and stuff. But also whenever I click, I get this red radar effect so that you can see where my mouse is, but you can also draw attention to when I'm actually clicking on something. Another way to draw attention when you click on something is to hit hit the sound on click. That's going to actually give you a click sound effect so that your viewers can audibly hear that you have actually clicked on something as well. Moving over to this call out section. Now, this is really, really cool. It's going to give us a little bit of like a special effect situation. What I like to do is use this um, freehand function, come over here to the square option and draw a window like this. And now we can choose what happens to the area outside of the window. So we can make it completely dark. So we're just focusing on that window we just created, or we can bring it up a little bit. We can also decide to blur the window we just created. So if you've ever watched any of my tutorials or anything where maybe I have a username or a password or a phone number or something, I can just take a little strip and blur it out. Or you can choose to blur the background only. You can zoom in on that 
little window that you created. You could do the same thing with your phone and iPad recordings as you have touched on those screens. Since you're not using a mouse, you can create a touch call out, which is very similar. So your viewer will be able to see exactly where you have touched your screen to open up an app or to do something within an app. Of course, you also have the ability to add simple shapes and any anything you need to to your screen, lines, um, even uh, drawings that you can add to your screen as well. You can also add text to your screen and then you can change um, the font, the size, the color. And in the next video that I have queued up for you over here, you'll see step-by-step -step how to get started with ScreenFlow as a complete beginner, even if you have never recorded a screencast or edited anything ever in your whole life. So I'll see you over there.